Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, we're going to have our class today from Oyotunji African Village in Sheldon, South Carolina. And um, I'm going to take you through the gate. So when you visit, this is one of the first few places that uh, you stop. And then we have uh, people in the village. This is uh, Shango Ede. Oshunade. Oshunade. I'm sorry. Yeah. She's one of the high priestesses here. Oh, I'm a baby, but I'm 30 years a Gungo priestess and a priestess of Oshun for 13 years. So what we're going to start the class with is a um, short um, tour. And, um, you know, we're going to wait for other students to join us. And so the round table because the ladies here don't want to. Okay, like sure. Them. So this is the entrance. And this is while waiting for others to join the class. And just giving you a shot of uh, this village. And here are some of the elder mothers. Say alafia to my students. Alafia. And these are some of the indigenous who live in Oyotunji. Yeah. Pioneers, some of them have been here since the 70s. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Welcome. Welcome, everyone. So I'm going to keep taking you around while waiting for our students um, to join. Wait, so, Miss, where are you? Yes. You said North or South Carolina? South, South Carolina. Oh, okay. Have you been here before? No, I haven't been there before. Okay. But a very interesting place. Yeah, I thought you were in another country. You see how the <laughs> I know. It's a different territory, even though it's in the United States, you know. Yeah. In the background, let me turn my camera this way. So it looks like you're in a foreign country, right? Yeah, I thought because you were the in way the house is. I thought yeah. you were in the village. You don't see that in New York City. Yeah. Even Central Park doesn't have um, that, you know? So. Yeah. Doesn't have that. yeah. So I don't know where is Oshun Ede. Do you know where she went? Oh, okay. Next to our goddess, androgynous, a local. All right. Oh, <laughs> yes. Okay, I see. So I'm still going to keep giving you a tour oh, as uh, <laughs> we're okay. approaching different uh, places. So I'm going to start with the priestess, let her give us a short, maybe 15 minute um, tour of the different um, goddesses and what they mean, um, you know, especially women, um, they are women. And, you know, for class day, we're gonna be talking of the um, influence of, um, you know, women, role of women in African um, development. Last week, we had another guest speaker who took us to um, different places in Africa and looking at women warriors, women leaders. So today, we're going to look at uh, spirituality, um, the importance of uh, motherhood, the importance of, uh, you know, matriarchy or matrilineal African families. So I have um, Oshunede to introduce us to where we are right now. Hi, Lafia and Ekabo, welcome. And we just honestly hosting this great, uh, important about women in the diaspora, the women in Africa, uh, as women of warriors. So we're standing in front of a locum, and a locum is androgynous. It is male and female. So we honor her as female. And we have somebody who have that androgynous look or androgynous energy. That would be a locum. That's the trees, uh, mystics, the priesthood, 
uh, male and female. And we're gonna we we're at a last one. Okay. Because right? I was gonna get. So we coming into Yamada, which is the mother, the logo, big mother. Big mother. And so we all come from the Amu fluid, which it is that is in our mother's womb. So Yamada is the mother. Ashiadukwe Yamada is the mother. Is the moon. And we all, as women, we have our cycles. So we all belong to the mother of my God. And I will open up the temple. And in African and any indigenous culture, you would have the symbols that would actually tell you of what energy that this particular temple. And we see it's blue. We see all of the sea creatures. We see the anchoring. We see the ship like right there. There's nothing more precious than a mother. Mother is more precious than gold. She carries us on our in our bellies for nine months and on our backs for three months. So we give honor to Yamaja, which is the force, the power of womb of the woman. Uh, as we know, we all come from the, the mother, the belly. Oh, Yamaja temple also is the representation of the egg bay meringue, the women's society here. Uh, those who come through the women's society, uh, there are certain skills that they learn uh, to equip themselves to be independent economically, number one. African women are to have their own markets. I like to say that it's not just about learning how to cook and clean and all of that. It's about preparing women to be uh, in positions of leadership because they are the leaders in their house. So we're going to go to my mother, our shoes. That's cool. And so, yes, Yamaja is the ocean. And we don't want to forget her speakers, her representations, her communicators here, a So for all of the indigenous African uh, gods, we have uh, the Alegbas that sit to make sure our communication. I want to honor this year here because she is a very, she's legacy. She brought a few families here from Buffalo during the Renaissance, during the Exodus. Mm. And that's when there was police brutality in the 70s. And so this year here, who lays in state, our Iyalode, she is, was a priestess of Yamaja, and she was the mother of women. And she led, she took charge for here. She led uh, the, the town town here, the uh, chief Shongo um, town town there, and Washadele. So we honor her. And that was strength. Buffalo women power. Mm -hmm. They came all the way from Buffalo, New York. Coming to freedom. This was the land of freedom. I know it's about women, but we're walking in uh, land that our gods of Africa live. And we give thanks to our deity Oshadina, who had the audacity to bring the gods of Africa here uh, in 1950s in the late 50s. Ashe, so this is our temple role, and we're about to visit our Shun, the river goddess, which I'm the priestess of. And she is the mother who actually is one who is very important in Odu. She is the one who saves humanity. And in our Yoruba culture and in every indigenous culture, you have a creation story. And I love the Yoruba creation story. So it was a time it is that Oshun and one female and 400 Arumilates came to the earth. And um, it was she who came to bring them the, uh, the, the plan and how to live on earth in harmony and in peace with Oshun. She represents love and harmony. And she'd rather not go to war. I love you She'd rather not go to war. But there's a role that is the warrior. She's not only pretty. And I like to point out here when I am doing my tour to let women know you are a goddess when it is that you have lived and your wounds have traveled the gravity of Mother Earth. And we should be proud of our aggressiveness because we feed our babies. We have women going to go get all kind of inductions and aggressive and stuff. So we can think that we have the goddess here seen as the as a full goddess of the first nation. We have nice fruit. I can't make those. And so our shun is the goddess of love. She is one who comes to the secrets to bring harmony. Her number is number five. <laughs> Without our children, this life is not worth living for a month ago. <laughs> oh, I do play. I got a little show again. So this is the shrine of our school. When you go to a show in Africa, uh, you will see the same symbol here. That's why I give honor to my because you didn't miss it.
So we're thankful that the culture here in America uh, um, is that what catches or, or connects us back to our culture back in Africa. So Yaya Oshu, she has many roles. And one of her roles is Olomoyoyo, which I am the road of. And she's a warrior. She carries her babies in her back with knives in her hand. And so I give thanks. I say, I do play all these Yaya show that she gave me the road of a warrior because that is who and what we are as queens, builders, rulers. Can you see yourself in there? Hmm? Now I can. Okay. <laughs> Let me know because it's very yes. All right. <laughs> so we're leaving the Oshun Shrine and she's the Oshun Priestess at um, Oyotunji Village. So Adiye, yeah, tell mm -hmm. us why people would, um, you know, pay homage to Oshun again. Oh, okay. Well, for one, let's start, start with the blood. The blood that runs through our veins is the river. Mm. All the Arishas are a corresponding of our makeup as human beings. And so Oshun is the river. And <clears throat> she's also, uh, people like to refer her to the love goddess, but I would say she is the wise goddess. She is the wife of Ifa. She is the one, <laughs> she is the wife of Ifa. She is the only one that uh, has the mysteries of Ifa and she made Ifa rich. So we don't want to play her out like she's just this pretty lady. She's very wise in how she deals with children. She spoils children. <laughs> we love children or she'll love children. Because they're the foundation. That's the that's the woman's role is to teach and train the children, and that is what Arshun wants us to do: to pay attention to the children. Then all the love and all of that will come later. Ashe. I do play. I do play. Ari, yeah, yeah. Arshun, can be a C. And Arshun simply is the only temple that actually has an Iku, and the Iku is the uh, honoring of the Arshun priestess. Uh, to Cuba to get initiated. mother goddess of the breath of the world. That's the breath you take. And when we leave, it is the breath that leaves. Uh, is Oya who captures our breath back into her wind. <laughs> As the mother of changes. The native people call her the Buffalo woman. She is where we get our strength from. She dances with the whip. We're on our way to her. <laughs> to Oya. To Oya. And we're coming up on Oya's festival. And when you want to petition strength, you call on Osa. When you need strength, 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 you call on her. Or Shun, if it's about the children, you call on her. But, but you know, she likes to sit under the waterfall. She likes to be drinking her champagne and, you know, enjoying her fruits of her labor. <laughs> So what of Yemoja, when do you call Yemoja? What would be the significance of Yemoja if you had to compare Oshun, um, Oya, and Yemoja? Oh, there's no comparison because it is the river that goes back into the ocean. Mother Yamaja is the mother Lodo. That's why we call her Lodo. She's a big mother. Mm -hmm. She is the, the, the supreme mother. And my son reminds me, he says, but don't forget it's like Yahoo is our real first mother because that's the breath. Mm -hmm. But yeah, my guy is the mother of would, Oshun. Would you compare Yemoja to like a mermaid or in oh, fantasy? Yes. All of her beautiful marina life. Yes. And one of the mermaids, we do believe. I do. Some people don't. Some people don't believe in mermaids, and that's okay. But I do. And so um, yeah, we will associate mermaids with yeah, Yamaja. Wait, well, you see mermaids around? Ah, uh, you know what? They have some over here at the Marina uh, Experiment Place here. They've gotten some in the Buford. Children have seen them. We've heard them. And so, yes, YouTube it and ask uh, mermaids in Buford, South Carolina. Wait, wow. what yeah. do it look like? Well, <laughs> you go ahead and pull it up and you tell me. <laughs> <laughs> And I think all of life is beautiful. You know, like octopuses, you know, they say they're from another um, mm -hmm. a galaxy. And um, because of the scientists that have studied them, they know that there is no other species on this earth that has the intelligence that the octopus has. So we honor all of them. I don't want to say, well, she's ugly. I Maybe do. before I leave, I'll say, I'll say mermaid and I'll take a picture mm -hmm. of it and bring it to New York for you. Yeah, look at so Oya is the mother of the ancestors because we all are returned ancestors. And the mother of the cemetery is the mother Oya. She is the mother that comes when we come into the earth. 
breath of life. And when it is that the Emi, when the breath is ready to leave, it is she that comes. Besides getting in, but it's she that comes and receives the breath. So we honor the mother of Yah. She is the mother of nine children. And we all are goddesses. We just have to know which goddess. And then Yashala is also a goddess. And that's what Bakalaj wrote. And so we all are goddesses. And we want to tap into our particular goddess. So our goddess will give us the strength. And so Oya is the warrior. She dances with the knife. She uh, she wears uh, army boots. <laughs> she is definitely the buffalo woman. And the native women call on her for strength. Mm -hmm. So where would, where would we have the depiction of Oya here? Well, we've had a fire, and but there was a gate here that had a nine faces, and here is her temple, actually. And so the, the spins in there had the nine faces, and Oya is represented by Pluto, the planet. We're coming upon her festival, Halloween. People honor the unknown ancestors, but it is in this temple that we come to to honor our unknown ancestors that would be like Don Balawedo, but the mother of Yah is the mother of the ancestors, the mother of uh, Iku, Ashe. Mm -hmm. And her number is nine. And those who have the mother of Yah's spirit with them, they know that they got multiple personalities. People would say, oh, she all split, oh, she bipolar. No, that's your Yah. <laughs> Ashe. Living village. So we have Mama Loja here. And most people who see Mama Loja, she is the mother in between the worlds that speaks to the priests before they go over and become priests. And she warns them that you must have good character. And all that you do. This is for we who get our cuts and we're about to go through our initiation. It is this mother and it is Oya that we speak with as mm -hmm. well. Or we have to go through her. But she reminds us that the culture is in our hands and we must be have good character, no stealing, no lying. Same thing like with the Christians, mm -hmm. you know, with the I love culture and tradition in the positive aspect. Mm -hmm. So as the women who are now in this, we are the return of our mothers. So remember your mothers for five generations are inside of our, and we can tap into those warriors mm -hmm. and because it's that time. I say, so Mama Loja, she tells us we'll never be broke, we'll never be hungry. As long as we continue to connect the children, we'll be right back home. I say, I do she's way, Mama Loja. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. You're very good. <laughs> I love that. Because all the others are elements. And yes, man, uh, mama is the spirit because that's when we're about to go as priests of the ancestors and we go through our initiation, we have to come to her because she is the mother of the marketplace. Heaven is home. Earth is the marketplace. So we are here to really actually have wealth. We're not here to be poor. So Ia is letting us know, since you've taken your uh, rightful place and become priest and you've connected back to your culture, do not take advantage, do not uh, stir people wrong, stir them into the right traditional custom way. So she reminds, she lets us know before it is that we go through, this is our responsibility to our people, to our community, to our nation. Yes, she is a spirit. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. And yes, Shana, which is the Obatala role, we're not, I've been doing Evos and Richards yet, so we won't travel there, but I don't want to forget about the female role of Obatala because I, yes, Shana came out. And so, yes, Shana is the wise mother, the, queen, the one that keeps order, because, you know, cleanliness is best to righteousness. So it's the Yashala that makes sure it is that we're able to even connect to our Orisha mm -hmm. uh, because it's through purity. Yes. So let me get my yes. bag and water here, okay. and then we can go to the little house. Oh, so what do you guys think so far? Oh, it's good. I searched ocean up. You sh you search for ocean? Yeah, I searched it up. Okay, what did you find? It found that she is the goddess of divinity, femininity, fertility, beauty, and love. And it mm -hmm. said she's connected to destiny and division. Yeah. So you see the importance of um, goddesses in African um, culture, yeah. right? 
and many people tend to have forgotten because they've adopted new ways of um, religion or new cultures, new traditions. So we're gonna go now to join other women who are waiting. Um, there's a women's circle that I would like us to continue the discussion um, on okay. the importance of um, women in African traditional societies. And then we can start the discussion on um, women in the Americas. But I wanted to give you um, an intro, you know, to the tradition culture, the traditional culture first, and then we'll start our discussion. So let's give a warm round of, of applause um, to uh, Oshuede, who gave us the tour just a few minutes ago. So you can unmute yourself and give her a round of applause. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Now we're going to. So sorry, I have questions for um for um Oshuede. Any questions? Do you want to ask a question about the status of any of the um goddesses? Hold on, that's okay. You started already. <laughs> Let me wipe that for you. No, 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 no. Okay. okay. You can hold the phone. Yeah. Do you have questions for her? Yeah. Is, is Ocean only in America or is she anywhere in the world? Oh my God. Brazil, um, all of the places our mother is at, Cuba. Um, <laughs> Tobago, Panama. Oh no, this is very ancient. It is only here in America. And we're so thankful for our king deity, Oshaginya, who dared. And I say that because it was like, it was Jim Crow laws. It was just white supremacy everywhere. And our king brought the gods of Africa here and he brought them from Cuba. Uh -huh. and, so, and in Cuba, it's major national holidays. I mean, we're talking about festivals, like the streets closed down. It's beautiful. Oh, wow. And she's also saint. All of our Orishas are corresponding to the saints as well. You will find them in the saints. Uh, deities because our people who were took into the Cuban to those islands they were made to be Catholics so they took oh. the Orisha they took the saints and they put the energy of the Orisha into the saint yeah mm -hmm. I searched her up and I saw like this is what she looks like allegedly this is what she looks like let me see this is like well, and she's depicting with gold. They have so many depictions of Arshun. Me personally, because I'm an elegant Arshun and I'm a warrior Arshun, I don't really like all of the nasty, perverted type of Arshun depictions because she's been abused long enough. She is the mother who has the wisdom. She is our blood. She is our help. And so we want to respect her. And she is the one who holds the sacred uh, Ifa. She knows how to cast. She is one who has the mysteries of Ifa. So yes, they have those USD green, gold, yellow. So yellow. I be, I be yeah. working my mother's colors now. <laughs> gold and yellow. I have my glitter on to honor her. Ashe. Mm -hmm. So yes, Isn't those are spirits like her. Um. That's another female uh, spirit, a female. She was a white to show bow. And um, you can learn about her. She actually, in the cemetery, she was carrier. I still had a little issue with how they say our shoe made her do this and that. But anyway, all mm -hmm. cultures and traditions have their orientations of their mythologies. And so there is another female or by There's many female uh, deities. You can go to India and have to represent my ancestors. You know, so <laughs> we have many goddesses. And so, Yes, Kanish, yes. So um, Arshun is the particular mother of, uh, in the Yoruba pantheon, the mother of fertility, the mother okay. goddess of love. She is the one who comes and saves the earth. She's the one who was sent with 400 males and she was the only female. 
And so things got chaotic and it was until it is that she was told to tell the Arumilés that the reason why things got out of order is because Arshun was sent there to guide and lead them. So we all are have the entity of Arshun in us because we have the river. So the manual respect is what I would say as power as in women and empowering women. We have to uh, call on our goddesses so we can get our respect. Mm -hmm. And remember they're magical too. <laughs> uh, Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. uh, let me see any other person have, do you have any other questions? Okay, so now I'm going to introduce um, the executive director of Oyotunji Village, and her name is Iya Ayodele Ayo uh, Adeleye. Yes, I'm sorry for butchering your name. <laughs> so you can tell us a little bit about um, Oyotunji Village and also the role that women have been playing. Um, in maintaining African culture in the Americas, in this village for, you know, for as long as you've been here or for the purpose that this village was founded. Because I know there's a women's society and we know that, you know, last week, remember our um, guest speaker um, showed us a lot of queen warriors, a lot of women who were instrumental in African um, societies. And she discussed the role of the queen mother the role of the queens, the role of the um, head of women's society, um, the role of uh, women in African culture and the, you know, that um, most of the human rights challenges that women face in Africa today were inherited from colonialism, not because that was how African societies were made. Of course, not everything was uh, rosy and butter when African societies existed, but of course, you know, the role of women were very instrumental in African traditional societies, you know, besides the fact that they were spiritual um, elders, um, you know, they actually advised kings, they were, you know, they played roles of uh, economic development of even uh, political advisors. Remember last week when our guest speaker came and showed us um, lots of pictures of queen mothers who took up their royal garbs and put on the war clothes in defense of their nations or communities. The role of women in agriculture, the importance um, that they played in feeding the community, in feeding their children. So we're going to speak with um, Iya Ayodele, um, who is the executive director of um, Oyotunji African Village in South Carolina. You have the floor. Oh. Alafia, everyone. Hi. Okay. I'm muted. Okay, so let me go back here. Actually, I'm going to go out. Sorry about that. Oh, I forgot to mention about uh, Lorraine, the Harry and Okay. All right. Go ahead and mute your mute your phone. Uh, I think she's too close. Oh, yeah, she's just too close. She might have to mute hers. Yeah, mine is muted. Okay, oh. Okay, now we're open. Okay. okay. So go ahead and see if I don't go mm -hmm. right here. Okay. Uh, Alafia, everyone. Mm, like uh, Dr. Remy Alapo okay. said, my name is Ayo Deli, and I am the executive director of Oyotunji. Uh, I've been uh, executive director for two years, and previously I visited Oyotunji for every festival about three years. But I have been living here for two years and assuming the position. In African spirituality and in Oyotunji African village, the women play a very vital, important role. In any village, if you come here or Africa, women are the forefront of all politics, the forefront of all moral character of the village. They do most of the education, they advise us to the king, and they set the standards for which uh, we all live. Uh, we are um, 
our research and the attributes of our research. Some have the attributes of uh, the male uh, part of the Orishas, but most of us are yayas, our mothers, our Yamaja, Oshun, Oya, um, and we take on those roles every day. We, as women, um, we are warriors, we are fighters, we are the nurturers of our culture, yeah. and we take pride in that. Uh, most of what I've seen when I was out in the Western world is that we have lost the big mama. Mm. That's what they call it. Mm. But in Oyotunji, it takes a village to raise a child. It takes a village to, 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 to um, personify the best part of womanhood. Mm. We want to, as women in Yoruba culture, for our women in the Western world to embrace the divine feminine power that we have. A lot of the young ladies we found today have lost that because of rap music. Uh, and we have uh, been fighting that for so long. The derogatory way that women are being portrayed, especially black women, we are offended greatly by the way that the Western world has uh, uh, made us feel that we are less than and we are not. Even with the color of our skin, they have made us feel as though if we are not a certain color, that we don't have the right to express ourselves. So getting back to our divine feminine culture, uh, the way that we should be as divine women, as goddesses, and, 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 and expressing ourselves in such an intelligent way that we do not have to use our bodies. We have to use our mind. Our minds to make sure that our families are, are in tune with our culture, with, in tune with our spirituality. And it's very hard when you're fighting against the grain. The part about Oyotunji, and I wish every woman in the United States, every black woman in the United States would visit, at least for a day, to see how we uh, mingle amongst each other, how we coexist in a way that is productive, that we do not uh, offend the gods, that we do not offend each other, that we, we cherish our life here. Our life here is astronomically fulfilling. We didn't say there was no problems and no troubles, but we have something so close to us, so precious, that we don't have to worry about that. There aren't any worries. When we come to Ifa, Orisha, your worries are over. Yeah, we have so many avenues by which we can uh, express ourselves. And we can let it go because we know that our Orishas will take care of it. I'm going to give you a prime example. I am a child of adoption. So during my life, I carried the spirit of abandonment. When I came to Oyotunji to live, I went to the deity Yamoja, which is my yeye, and I gave offerings and I gave prayers. And I was healed and delivered from that. And that was a lifetime goal of mine. But if I had known about African spirituality at that time, because I had been praying in the Christian world, oh, please heal me, God, please heal me, God. But all of the Mare, mm, the all true God, there's only one God, led me to my Yeye Yamoja. And after many offerings and many hours of prayers every day, I was healed. So this is why we should embrace it. No matter, I mean, we understand that uh, the world has demonized African spirituality or anything that deals with Africa. But we are the number one. And African women, black women, women of melanin skin should understand that we are the forefront. We are the mothers of the world. Yeah. Even in slavery, the white miss, missus used to bring her baby 
to the black woman for him to suck her breasts because that milk would make him strong. So we should look at that. And most of the women are the ones that kept the men, the men up and encouraged doing slavery. What they endured, they endured so much in the Middle Passage. But in time when they got to the islands and then to the Americas, the women, the black women are the ones who kept the men going. So we should embrace those things and we should uh, be thankful for our mothers before us all the way back to Africa. Because with the strength that we carry now that's trying to be watered down, we still have it. And we need to find that divine feminine power again. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Iyayo Dili, um, for those um, empowering words. Do you have any questions or comments for her? The floor yeah. is open. You can uh, mute your I mic. I was there. And put your camera on so we can see you. Who is speaking? It was Annette. me. I thought it was yes, good. go ahead, Annette. Yeah, she made sorry, a lot of sorry. points. Yeah, she made a lot of points with the um, black woman in Western society being degraded and stuff, mm -hmm. and being you know vilified in the media being um represented as you know in these stereotypes and stuff and it's really damaging to black women and stuff like yeah. that yes my sister mm -hmm. thank you annette for the um comment. jennifer You can unmute your mic. Yeah. Um, it was just very interesting to know that, you know, learning all this new information about the the black woman, like how much how much they endure, you know, how they keep their families and together. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, Nareen? Um, I really like you the can way. put your camera on so you, you know, they'll see you. And then we go to Kayla. Go ahead, Nareen. I don't want to turn on. Yes, hi. Hi. I left my computer. What, what was that? Um, I really like learning about the gods, the goddesses, you know, it was really nice. Which one of them struck you the most and Osh why? Oshun. Oshun? Why? Yeah, the different um, ways that she's depicted and um, like how she mentioned that she has been through enough and uh, it would be kind of like distasteful to keep using the the bad depictions or um, the angry, malicious ones, you know? Thank you, Nareen. Kayla, what of you? Kayla. Yes. I don't know what was said. Right. Uh, yes, okay. go ahead. I sent away from my laptop for a second. What was the question? Okay. All right. Um, let's let's go inside. Hopefully, the um, sound is not gonna interfere this time around. So I'm walking back into the circle house, and this is usually where they have uh, meetings. So if there's something to be talked about, everyone will come to the circle house. Come in circle. You know, we we'll solve it immediately. It's not like in modern societies where have to make an appointment for one month time to speak with a therapist or you know someone in the community or something like that but those are available so i like the concept of um, right here in for your two village
activities. You know, if there were problems, issues, um, you know, they would gather and air it out. They would have um, elders and young people just, you know, gather under the tree or in the village square somewhere and resolve it. No issue was too big or small. So you see, we didn't carry a lot of grudges in those days. And even places where grudges were, they tried to mediate using um, women's empowerment or the role of women in resolving conflict because women were, of course, the mothers, they took care of the homes, the communities. And you know, the other thing that probably, um, you know, either of you can discuss that, the role of, um, you know, women in taking care of children, like everyone, it takes a village to raise a child. So why don't, do you have your phones with you? Okay, you can use yeah, your daily uh, phone. Talk about, you know, how children are here. You have a lot of sisters around. Everyone just takes care of each other. You know, talk about that. And you also, you can chime into the conversation. So we have another of our uh, mothers here. She's going to introduce herself and then discuss the role of, you know, the concept of it takes a village to raise a child, the role of women in community building, the role of um, one woman in raising many children who are not even her biological children. Go ahead, sister. Unless she's muted.
so much, um, Ia, for those um, empowering words. Any questions or comments? All right, so I'm gonna she move was muted to... the whole time. We didn't hear her. I'm sorry. She was muted the whole time. She was muted. Yes, she was trying to tell you, but you couldn't hear us. Oh, oh I can not hear you either. Oh, I... okay. Well, um, do you want to say it again? It was a. Uh, it was very empowering. I mean, I could hear her. Um, I didn't know you could have sent me a chat or something or unmuted, but I didn't hear you. But she was saying, you know, we need to get it right. Women have been, um, uh, black women in the Americas, you know, they've, they've gone through a lot. Um, we need to continue to do, find ways to work collectively and stop, um, the hate, stop wanting something that someone else already got and, you know, continue to encourage and empower each other. But why don't I give her um, the phone, let her quickly sum up what she said um, a few moments ago. There you go. So let me go back out. Go ahead. Let it stop funny because I was like, well, it's not even making a sound while I'm talking because <laughs> I was muted. <laughs> And so I thought I unmuted you. I do pay on. I um basically I was just saying that um I thank uh, Dr. Ye uh, Ye Remy Alapo. I was thanking her for the question and the opportunity to even speak on it because it is something that, something that definitely needed to be talks about a lot of people are saying oh black women are this black women are that black women are this no one say have a why or how or what we can do about it and i'm thankful for this class so we can talk about it um and i was also saying how um just from the trauma of slavery alone has affected us so much because during those times i was thinking about how our men were taken away from us and so we as women had to pick up. I was talking about how um, a lot of people like to say, oh, this is a man's job or a woman's job, but the kids to be each other's balance. Um, so yes, when our men, uh, during those horrible times of slavery, when our men were taken away from us, when our men were killed in front of us, when we no longer had the protection of our men, but instead we were uh, instilled with fear, where, uh, we had to pick up their slack. We had not necessarily slack, but we had to feel that missing piece because we are nurturers and we had to recondition and nurture ourselves again. So yes, we grown testosterone. Yes, we done put on a man's pants and yes, we done bend ourselves on the same, at the same time. So it can't be overbearing and we come out combative. We come out feel uh, enraged and filled with anger. We can, and um, when that anger do come out, we not only um, uh, keep we not keeping it in ourselves, we letting it out, and we letting it out on each other. And yes, we are becoming we are filled with emotion. We are filled with a lot of different things. But uh, I don't know exactly how I said it. But uh, yes, we are filled with that. But it's so like. I, I don't know, because now I'm like, I'm thankful that we are filled with that, because since we know, haven't, since we acknowledge that we are filled with that, we can let it out. Yeah. I remember a priesthood being at all your tongues. Y'all wanted to cry so bad. I was just uh, going through so much. I was in my head, in my emotions, and I wanted to cry, but I also wanted to hold it in. And uh, me not saying nothing to nobody, a priest came up to me and she said, girl, you better let them ugly tears out so that beauty can come, can flow when we as women we so strong we so nurturing we so protective and we want to hold all this stuff in so we come out any kind of way because it got to come out but if we let it out we control our own emotions we can make room for that beauty to come in as well um but that's what i was also speaking about how uh the reading of the week was talking about this uh really speaking on this if i spoke and if I said to be gentle, 
that's the key. We have to be gentle with each other. Um, I, I did. I, uh, that was this call. I was talking about how they um, presented the women with on the media. Was that media when I was saying that? When I was talking about how it was the back of oh yeah, oh so I made you was the old dude that give thanks to Ludumare. Aluda Mare knew that there needed to be balance on earth. So from heaven, he sent the IJ. The um, IJ had so much special stuff they couldn't bring on their own to earth. And so instead of uh, letting the problem uh, continue or saying like, oh, they got to figure that out on their own. Oh, Samaji, oh, yeah. Put the IJ on her back to bring to the earth from heaven for balance. And... Um, I was also speaking about how they built Oyo Tunji and how the Yoruba Royal Academy is standing up on the head of three women as pillars. On the opposite side to the right, right across from me, you have three more women holding this building, the, the Temple of Ile Day. Now, these women, one uh, side of the women are more dark skinned and the other side is light skinned. And I love how they did that because it shows the balance of everybody working together, not necessarily this one or this one, but everybody coming together and working collectively because the plan is that we all make it truly. Sometimes we can get uh, off site, sometimes we can get distracted. But before uh, slavery, before everything, before slavery, before we even came to Earth, we made an agreement with Oludamari about what we were going to do here. And I know being on Earth, it's easy to see what someone else haven't wanted. But um, we're all on our own spiritual journey. And the plan is that we stay focused. We be gentle with each other. We be gentle with ourselves, respect self, honor one another. Like, I say. I don't remember. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ia. Can you find Do you hear her now? Do you have any questions for her before the next um question? Okay. The question is the image of the angry black women. Why is that? I mean, you want to talk about that first? No, okay, so they're passing the. Come, 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 go ahead. You can give us the phone. Um. I did. Okay. I do say uh, thank you so much, so I'm yeah, I'm Opie Adagio Ocean Kunle, and I live here at Oyo Chinese American Village. And let's see. I can see myself. I see you, but I can see myself. Can you hear me? I can't. I can. Alafia, I am uh, Ofe Dajo, Ocean Kunle, and um, I do believe the question is about the image of the angry black woman in America. And what I have found, I am a resident here in Oyotunji. Um, a little bit about myself, I am a um, 48-year-old mother of two children, young adults, and in my journey, to this point, I'm finding that it was a lack of knowledge and understanding of who I was, who, who my ancestors were, where I came from. There was always a spirit of keeping up, a spirit of comparison, a spirit of not being enough, a, a spirit of just not um, knowing what to do and how to do it to survive in a society that really was not created for me to thrive in. So in studying the Orisha um, and learning about the knowledge of my ancestors, I've had the advantage of um, becoming confident in my DNA and who I am and that I was not, this world 
that we live in is not created for me to thrive in. So it's up to me to define and find my own way through the knowledge and the wisdom of my ancestors to um, figure out the best path for me. So as a veteran, um, as a mother, I've traveled all these different paths and was blessed to find um, Oya Chunji uh, one year ago. And um, it's been an enlightening, the most enlightening thing. And as the first in my family line, as the daughter of a Baptist preacher who has a lot of unpacking to do, um, really just grasping and understanding where we come from, it's my job and now it's my responsibility. So I don't really have time to be angry because it's my time to educate. It's, just, it's my time to educate my parents, my family, my children, my grandchildren and the rest of my lineage that, is, that have yet to come about the true knowledge of who we are um, as Yoruba people and the power that we truly walk with. So um, I hope I've answered the question. I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> Do you have any questions for me? Okay. Yeah, everything. Are you on mute, y'all? Um, I see you. Uh, well, here, I village. Uh, actually, uh, my name is Iwo or Ibi Doom. And I'm actually an artist. So one of the things that I can say to contribute to the conversation is throughout my artistry, I've always focused on the female form. So the African female form. So I've done a lot of research on um, different things, uh, especially uh, topics like the hot and tight being and Sarah Bartman, different things like that. And so when you, when you look at the history of it, you can see the strength in the African culture. You can see how strong it is to other cultures and how much they want to um, uh, uh, appreciate it. Even on the topic of Sarah Bartman, um, speaking of her, how they loved her, uh, her body so much where there was almost a perversion. They were so taken and so awed by her form and her shape and her breast and her hips and her behind. So even that is reverence to the African female form. Uh, so with looking at that in my artistic work, I choose to always try to represent the African body or the female body in the most positive way, because we need to see ourselves uh, in, in all positivity. We need to see ourselves in, in all ways beautiful. Um, that's the healthiest way to see. So when we look at history and we see how uh, like the Europeans, the, the, the European gaze on our women. Um, for me, it's important to, to show a reverse of that or to show the positive ways that we uh, should look at ourselves as women so that we can love ourselves and each other a little bit more. Thank you so much. You Do you have any questions or comments for her before she leaves? All right, so we're going to continue. Thank you so much. Yes, yes, yes. We're going to continue with um, the conversation. I know some of you may have um, class 315, but um, I'm, since I'm here this week, I want to take advantage of the opportunity that I'm in Oyotunji African um, Village and discussing with um, the women who are part of this community. So we're going to continue the discussion into the office hour time. So now I'm going to pass the mic to some other women continue um, this conversation. So, yeah, Yodele, do you mind to pass the mic to any of our sisters? Oh, actually, use my phone since I'm starting to hear you. Yeah, just introduce yourself and who you are, what you do in only 
that's all I'm doing on this journey. It's just experiencing so far. Oyotsunji has been wonderful. The elders, I pick up a little bit of information from them every time I'm in conversation or near. They are always so helpful with with the knowledge. I do pray to them all. So your role as a young black woman, a wonderful young black man I face. Um, so I only have a me. Um, as a young black woman outside of the I was not, I didn't have much help from other black women to support. Um but coming to oil and seeing how they move in units men and women, with the women especially, how they move in unit is beautiful to me. I never saw a group of many Black women moving together to uplift and uphold this place. Um, what um, Ashitoluwa was talking about earlier with um, how the village has worked to um, with her daughter. I've, I've helped out a couple of times with um, Akila, and she always talks to, um, Akila is a bright soul. I love her so much. And watching other women do the same thing that I've done is take Akila while Ashitonua <coughs> goes out and does more work that needs to be done. It's beautiful. I never saw this kind of support system until I've come to Oyotunji. Everyone's so welcoming, all the women. Um, the first time I've hung around the women personally was at the women's compound in Yamoja. Um, they were also welcoming, I think it was um, Afadijo's birthday, and we were celebrating. And I enjoyed, I enjoyed myself that night. The women here are all beautiful. They are supportive. You come to Oyo Tunji and they they, they will lend you the shirt off their backs, the lapas off their hips. Um, yes. Thank you very much. So as you can see, or oh, and as you heard, we've had about five or six, uh, you know, women talk today on the role of, uh, you know, motherhood, the role of um, African women in spirituality, uh, black women and the way they are perceived in the American society, uh, black women and, you know, the burdens that are still on their shoulders, whether they're in Africa or in the Americas, and the role of um, black women in community building. And, you know, we've heard from different perspectives, from, you know, young women, from middle-aged women and from elderly um, women, we've heard from our mothers, we've heard from our sisters, we've heard from our aunties, our grandmothers, and they continue to be instrumental in the way that uh, Black women are the future, you know, the Black women who raise the future, who are responsible for carrying a lot of weight on their head, whether it's from education, to nurturing, to food production, to feeding, to all types of um, activities. And I think that um, continuing with the discussion for this class, we still have a lot because to learn. Um, we're, we're just concluding with um, African women and their role in traditional community building. And we were able to hear from some of our sisters here today on you know, the perspective of what many young black women in the Americas are taught to feel about themselves 
the way that they look at themselves, whether they're lost or whether they've not found themselves or whether you know they're in certain situations where they don't have support. And we heard that in many African traditional societies, women are the backbone of the community. And I so much love the concept of it takes a village to raise a child, which means if you're in that community or part of the community, it doesn't matter who your mother is. It doesn't matter what house you came out of, you know, everybody was your mom. And we also heard from some of our uh, mothers here who they said, you know, sometimes, you know, people will just bring food for their children and vice versa. So I don't know if those types of um, traditional communities can continue, especially, you know, we have a place like um, in New York City, it's very rare, maybe for Thanksgiving or Christmas, uh, people may do those types of uh, activities or show those types of gestures, but um, in a place where, you know, there's a community that has been formed in uh, Sheldon, Buford County, um, South Carolina called Oyotunji African Kingdom, you know, it's a community bringing the elements or practices of African traditional culture um, into this community. You know, there are places of worship or spirituality where each person um, is encouraged, where each person is, you know, encouraged to find who they are, led by their destiny. You know, the role of women in spirituality, in cleansing, in life, in motherhood, in providing, in humanity. You know, we saw it from the um, three shrines that we went to to visit the three goddesses, Oshun, Yemoja, and Oya. And, you know, we spoke to the Oshun priestess here. Um, of course, you know, many people may not be um, conversant in terms of um, learning about African gods or goddesses or African spirituality. But from the information that was passed um, to us in class today, you can do some quick research and type in Oshun, which one student earlier, I believe, um, was able to find out um, who Oshun was. You can also Google Yemoja. Some people call her Yamaha. Um, you know, it depends on uh, where you are. So you can Google that and find out more and the role of um, Yemoja in African spirituality. Also the role of, um, you know, Yaloja. You know, last week, um, the guest speaker discussed about the market women, you know, who were responsible for the economic um, activities in many communities in Africa. And we heard of the Yalojas um, today, you know, the market women or the head of the market women who is instrumental in, you know, making sure that commerce and trade um, is carried out um, on a weekly or, um, you know, often basis. We also heard about, you know, motherhood. We heard about so many things today. And I hope that even though we've discussed um, a lot of topics that we're gonna find on our syllabus, we'll be able to use some of this information throughout the rest of the semester, because I believe in week 10 or 12, we'll be talking about black women bodies specifically on how black women are taught to maybe hate themselves or you know, looking at their body doesn't conform to European standards or something like that. And many people have uh, you know, uh, been raised to think the same way. Also, the role of women as um, single mothers you know, in, in, in the Americas. You know, many have been taught that you know, you're just a product of um, maybe sexualization and after that, um, not good enough to have or to build a home. But remember the support that many black women actually give is um, endless, you know, to their own children and other people's children, their own families, other people's families, their own communities and other people's uh, communities. So, you know, there's a saying in Africa that the mother's job or the role of the mother is so endless, it, it just does not end, you know, from one thing to another, the woman or the mother um, is responsible for um, doing. And at the end of the day, who takes care of the woman? Who takes care of the mother? You know, who is responsible for, you know, uh, paying forward or paying back all the services that the African woman has contributed since the beginning of time? 
So um, I would like to find out if you, my class, um, have any other comments, any questions or any feedback to some of our mothers and sisters and aunties that have um, spoken today. So let's go around and find out. Uh, okay, I think it's only Jennifer that is here. Jennifer, what is your overall um, take on the class today? I know many other students had to drop off at 3.15, um, but not to worry, this discussion is being recorded. So, oh, Annette is here also. Um, do you have any comments? What was your overall uh, perspective or what feedback do you have to some of the discussion you've heard today? Go ahead, um, Jennifer. Um, I just um, want to thank them for giving us all this information. And, um, and it was really interesting hearing about, you know, how, you know, how everybody takes care of each other. And you know, everybody's like family. So th that really stuck with me. Thank you very much, Jennifer. What of you, Annette? Um, what I've learned is from, mostly from the spirits, the ocean. That one really fascinated me the most. And not only that one, but also, the other speaker who came on here discussing about how black women are treated in Western society and how they're represented in Western society. And I thought that was interesting as well. So yeah, I think it was good. Thank you very much. So at least you have um, last week and this week with we live guest speakers. So you can apply, you know, some of the discussion from the guest speakers into what you're gonna be learning in class into some of your discussion questions, into some of your papers um, and other discussions um, as we move along. We're in week five or six now, and we still have about 10 weeks for the semester to end. Um, let me see, I, I see, um, who is Ofe Dajo? Oh, okay, okay, all right, um, okay. So let's um, unmute our mics and give a warm round of applause to our guest speakers today and thank them for the um, opportunity to be able to <laughs> learn our class from the Lotunji African Kingdom in Sheldon, South Carolina. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And we say adupe. Adupe means thank you in Yoruba language. Thank you so much for joining our class today. Thank you. All right. So we've come to the end of class for October 14, 2021, uh, Black Women in Africa and in the Americas. The discussion on the role of African women in traditional societies, role of African women in promoting African culture, and also the role of women in matrilineal um, societies or communities. And, you know, pretty much half hours, all the topics from the beginning of the semester to the end were um, carried out or Yeah. Oh, all right. So next week, we're going to be meeting um, in person in M310. Um, you still have some assignments to work on. I see Blackboard is still empty. Remember, all this carries um, great. So I gave extensions, and um, I'm offering one more week of extensions until this Sunday. Um, after this week, um, we need to really move on. Um, so if you still have discussion questions that are outstanding, please post them. If you have reflection papers that are outstanding, post them. If you have any work that you've not completed in week one to six, I'm going to give you this week to work on it. That's because I'm not in New York. So may the spirit of the ancestors continue to guide everybody. And may we as women, uh, Black women um, in Africa, in the Americas, continue to collectively work together and um, support each other. 
All right. So God bless you and see you all next week. Bye bye from Oyo okay. to Jeffrey Village. Take care. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay. Bye.